here. I'll send this recording. So thank you everyone for making it today. I know it's a hard time for all of us, and especially you're here on my Zoom call, so that's perfect. I'm gonna talk about Project Management 101 today, or in other words, how to make your capstone project a happy experience. So the agenda for today, uh, firstly, we'll talk about why do we need to care about this for our capstone, and then uh, project management in a nutshell, as well as uh, what else makes a successful project. But first, I mean, before we go in into any details, you may wonder who is this lady talking about project management for me? Uh, I want to give some information about myself and um, give me some credentials in talking about this topic. So firstly, I, uh, as Angela say, I'm an alumni. I graduated from uh, UBC Master of Data Science second cohort. Uh, from my experience, I went through the uh, Capstone project myself, and I also did interviews uh, some of the Capstone partners as well as my cohort friends. And I realized that like having project management, understanding, and knowledge can really help play a big role in your success for the project. I'm also a senior data analyst at Unbounce. I manage uh, projects from small to large with uh, technical stakeholders, semi-technical or even non-technical uh, stakeholders, sometimes multiple projects at once. Uh, I'm also a co-organizer for a Women in Data Science in Vancouver conference. We brought the conference from an event of 50 uh, participants in university level to uh, Vancouver level of more than a hundred uh, participants. Um, I mainly take care of the logistic part, which uh, involve a lot of project management. And also, fun fact, I'm a corgi mom. Um, so I did my market research, and if like in all of Vancouver, I think Canada, there is only one corgi named Guava, and it is my corgi. Okay, cool. Um, so let's go on into why do we need to care about project management? So firstly, this actually happened to me and my group. Several months ago, I got a chance to reconnect to my uh, capstone partner and um, asked about, so how did you think about my project in terms of project management? He said this, well, we didn't have uh, we didn't end up using your uh, project at all because the person who who's supposed to take care of your code he changed the company. I was like, oh shit, because sorry language, because it's like it's just very hurtful to hear that after all the hard work we put it into the project and it end up being so useless after all. We want to avoid this. Um, Second, this happened to one of the group and there was a lone wolf in the group who wanted to take all the work, leaving nothing else for other team members to work on. Well, this, like, firstly, it create a very uh, difficult situation environment for the whole team, as well as leaving a very bad mark on the impression uh, from the capstone partner. So I actually, um, interviewed a capstone partner for, for this group. And um, well, they thought that the lone wolf is the person who is most hardworking in that group. And all the teammates who did nothing, uh, really they were just lazy. Okay, so this is a very dangerous uh, part because if you plan to apply for jobs um, at your partner companies with this bad impression, how likely you can end up with that job? Well, questionable. And last but not least, it happened to many groups that miscommunication, uh, which lead to arguments and duplication works, really give everyone just a very hard time and just like men like bad mental state to do the project. So with that being said, I hope that everyone, um, you don't want to put yourself into bad situations like the one I mentioned before. And that's why we talk about project management today, um, so that we can help you to have a happy experience with your project. So now this is the part where I grab my water, and if you have any 
question, feel free to raise your hand. I think there is no option to raise hand, but you can click to like thumbs up or something. Awesome. So I think no questions so far. Um, so let's move on to the first part of project management. The very first part, and you and your team were actually involved in this part, which is the project proposal. The very first thing you need to think about is to determine the sponsor. So it's very straightforward in this case that your capstone partner is the sponsor. However, think about the different layers of sponsor. It can be the data science team at the partner company, but the end user of your project can be in marketing or sales team. So think about who are the key decision maker in this case. And if your partner, the main point of contact end up being on vacation, then who is uh, the second main point of contact that you can uh, ask questions. The second part is to define a singular problems. I know that for some projects, a partner might propose several problems for you to solve. However, really ask them to why they want to solve the problem for more context and the true reasons behind that so that you can prioritize which is the problem that most worth to solve and benefit uh, the, the partner greatly. Then move on to third point, uh, defining the project goals. So besides uh, solving the problem that your partner state out, Think about the business impacts that you will uh, make on your uh, partner side. Is it increasing revenue for them or is it decreasing the cost in manual work? Understanding this will help you to get that sense of values for your project, as well as just um, really highlighting that point to your partner. And your partner will be like, oh, I'm impressed and uh, I want to they understand the benefit. I understand the benefit. And I want to just put more effort into helping them um, benefit us in the company, right? And then the point, the objectives and the scope of the project. Uh, remember, you only have eight weeks. Uh, so the objectives and the scope need to be tamped down within this eight week. It has to be specific, measurable, achievable, and realistic. Then you think about the solution hypothesis and deliverable. What are your data science solution and techniques you're proposing? Uh, what are the final products you want to bring to the table? And when you think about the final products, think about the end users of that product. If the end user is someone who don't know how to run the code, who sit in the marketing department, then maybe delivering a package, an R or Python package, doesn't make sense at all. Then number six, think about the assumption of risk and dependencies. So dependency here can be language. If the partner team purely use Python, it doesn't make sense for you to do an R package. And if the partner proposing uh, uh, deep learning project, are they going to give you some uh, budget or AWS, Google Cloud credits? If not, then it is a good opportunity to raise this question and just be on the same page with your partner. And then risk management plan. Um, well, nothing will be very smooth during the project. Maybe you will end up taking a very different direction during your project. So think about, do you have a risk management plan in place so that you still can meet the deadline as well as delivering a high quality product? Number seven, think about dates. What are the key milestones, um, internal, external timelines? Uh, give yourself a really realistic timeline here. Especially in this time, if you are not used to working remotely, you might have to give yourself some time to acquaint yourself to the situation, be comfortable working in a remote team. And think about how many hours you want to commit per day. Uh, if you don't want to work extra hours over hour, then um, stick to the eight hour work, work week and things like that. And then project approval. 
Now that you feel good about your proposal, walk it through with uh, the partner and teaching fellow, get questions answered before proceeding. Cool. Any questions so far? I'm gonna grab one here. Okay, so seems like no questions so far. Now let's move on to project uh, planning part. So now you may wonder, what is the difference between a proposal and the planning? So the proposal are, um, is the place where you keep all the high level objectives, while the planning part is when you really expand on the proposal and think about how your team can execute the proposal. So first thing, think about a success. What success looks like for you? Maybe this is not too, too relevant to the capstone project, but in real life, you need to think, what are our current state right now? What is the baseline? And you can evaluate the success criteria when the project is done or throughout the whole execution part. Number two, setting milestone. Although we mentioned about the milestone in the proposal, but this is an expansion on that. Start from the highest level of milestone and then layer in the deliver deliverables into these phases. Number three, the communication plan and rhythms. Um, think about what is the best way to communicate with your partner. Well, at Unbounce, we rarely check our email because we talk to each other either on Slack, Zoom call, or um, like just document our, our, like everything on an internet like conference. So what are the types of meetings you want to have in, in terms of within the team or within uh, with your partner and your fellow? Then what is the frequency uh, of those meetings? Then think about the tools for tracking and communication as well as uh, breaking it all down. So, in terms of uh, tools for tracking and communication, uh, here are some of the free tools that um, I find very useful based on my own experience. So Slack, everyone, uh, I, I know that like uh, MDS use Slack for uh, communication. So you can use this tool for ongoing updates and discussions with your team, even your partner and your teaching fellow. Email. Uh, I mean, if you end up using email, uh, then it is a very good way to update on the milestone achievements, uh, some actions that need to take or questions to partner. I want to talk about how to make a very um, actionable title later um, if you end up using email. And then Google Drive, like it's a, just a very good way to uh, like, so that the team can edit documents together GitHub, I know that MBS use GitHub, so it's pretty straightforward. So it's also a very good tool for project tracker and documentation. And then uh, Zoom call, a Google Hangouts, any video conferencing tools, especially during this time where we social distancing, it's just very good to hold meetings, working sessions together or ask questions. Okay, so if you end up using email um, as one of the way to communicate, then Think about very specific uh, email title. The title needs to suggest the content and what kind of actions that people need to take so that you will just increase the likelihood of your email being answered um, in a timely manner. So for example, if you need approval for your proposal, then call it out loud in your email title. Or if they, you need uh, your partner to uh, to test the R Shiny app, then to say action required, things like that. Well, then let's talk about GitHub project and Wiki. Um, if you're not familiar with Wiki, it, um, I give some examples here, but I find that it is a very good uh, way to, to give documentation for, for your project. Um, these examples are some of the very good Wiki page online. Um, also, GitHub project is uh, to help you manage the process. So this is how GitHub project looks like. Um, it has different tabs to do in progress, test, review, and deploy. Um, 
this is very similar to Chira, a project management tracking software that um, I think a lot of tech company at, um, in Vancouver and also Canada are using. Um, and Bells is also using that. And so this is one example of uh, the project board from my team. We have all the to-do tasks and we know who are assigned to each task, who, which tasks are in progress, which one needs to be reviewed, who are the reviewer for these tests, and which tests are done. Uh, having this detail board give your team a very transparency and a sense of accountability uh, to move the project forward. Okay, so yeah, like Jira, I think it's a paid tool, so you can really make use of GitHub project for this uh, tracker. And then think about like how you you want to commit your code um, in GitHub. If you decide to go with GitHub as um, to, to document your project. So I hope that no one wants to direct commit to Masper because this is a very bad practice. So you have to use fork and branch and that's the conversation um, within the team to decide which one is uh, the best practice for, for the project. And then think about the template for pull requests. It's not necessary, but I find it very helpful to be on the same page of what needs to be done and what has been done. And then think about within the team, what is a good code review? What is an acceptable code review? I attach here uh, an article that I find very useful uh, for myself to understand this topic. Um, I think this needs to be communicated within the team because sometimes you don't want your code to be wrong and people just like, looks good to me, please merge. That's, that will not help you to bring the project to success. And then standardize your coding style. I know that each person might have different style of coding, but if you are developing something like a package, for example, it needs to be standardized so that later on your partner can use it uh, with ease. So I recommend some of the package. Um, these are in Python. For example, Linter, like Slack 8 or former like Black. Uh, but I believe that in R, they have um, some package as well for this purpose. Also use set up CI CD like Travis or GitHub Actions so that you can make changes with confidence. Cool. Now, after you think about all of those uh, communication plans, uh, think about how you want to break it down. There are many project management flows, um, the waterfalls, agile, but I really think that agile makes um, very good sense in this case, because it will set you a mental state to build things incrementally and test ideas constantly. I uh, attach here a very good ar article on agile project management if you want to read more. And then think about uh, assigning the roles and tasks to uh, your team because I believe that issuing responsibilities to team members really give each person a sense of ownership to the project. Uh, everyone finds um, themselves giving values to the project, so they will give um, like good effort to, to having the project successful and done in the end. So assigning roles. Uh, these roles can be rotated. Uh, for example, who are the project management? manager or a secretary in your group, this person will make sure the tasks are done and team achieving the goals on time. Uh, meeting, who are the meeting facilitators? Who are the note takers during those meetings? Who are the testers or code reviewers for each PR? And then you assign a task for people. Uh, I have to call out that uh, from my interview with um, my cohort friends, uh, there are some teams who for example, there is a person who take care mainly for one PR, but then another person believe that his code is way better than the current situation. So he just make changes directly to, uh, to the code without telling the other person. It is very rude to do that. So I would recommend that if you are assigned to each task, um, but you still have time after you finish your task, offer to peer review or 
pair code with、um, your teammate, it will trigger a very collaborative and safe environment for the whole team. Okay. Okay. Think about assumptions and constraints.、Uh, an assumption is something that you think to be true, but there is no warranty.、Uh, the first example. I will get answers from partners when I need them. Well, not necessary because partners they also have their own project within the company, so your capstone project might not be the only thing they take care. Of. So, like really plan ahead of time, give yourself some bubble time to to get answer from、uh, partners. Example number two, my teammate is willing to stay up late to make sure that the project meet deadline. Well, not necessary. If your teammate、uh, have families that they have to take care of, or they just have side projects、um, beside this capstone project, then really think about the part where I talk about timeline. Think about the time you want to commit. Do you want to commit to the working hours from eight to five every day? And、uh, so, yeah, like give give yourself time and think about、uh, how your teammate. Want to contribute, and then constraints.、Uh, think about the constraint. Constraints are limitations imposed to the project, such as soft schedule or budget. So business constraints can be the budget. If the the partner give you some budget for the deep learning project, the budget, then is that budget limited, or you can go over that budget? Making sure to understand this. Um, and then technical constraints, for example, language. I already mentioned this, and also data. Hopefully, the data you, you receive for this project is clean. But if not, then really think about the time that you have to to plan out to clean the data. Okay,、uh, so that's a lot of information.、Um, does anyone have any question? You can put some thumbs up. I want to grab my water here. All right. Cool. So no questions so far.、Uh, we will have a Q and A session in the end, by the way. So let's talk about project execution after all that planning. So、uh, in terms of ex execution, the very first meeting among your team, student advisor, and capstone project,、uh, capstone partner,、uh, sorry, is the kickoff, the project kickoff. So this is. A great opportunity for everyone to be on the same page of the project proposal and the communication plan. And then think about the way you want to track your work and reporting on the progress.、Um, so GitHub project is one of the good way. Another thing I really highly recommend is daily stand up. So the whole team, if you don't want to meet each other during the day,、uh, the daily stand up is really a very good、um, occasion where. We really ask each other: Are we on track for for the deadlines? And、uh, where are we? What did we do yesterday? What are we going to do today? And what is our goal for the by the end of this week? And then、uh, you think about、um, the acceptance criteria. Test them out. Like determine whether the project deliverables are complete and accepted as done throughout the project. And number four. Uh, setting recurring meetings and providing updates. So updates can be within the team, updates to different stakeholders. Like I mentioned, data science team, marketing team. Marketing team probably don't need、uh, so frequent update on the technical part, but maybe if you、uh, have built out a product for the end users, then it is the best time to check with them. Okay, so. Upon completion,、uh, if you have set out any success criteria, then you can test it、uh, even during the、uh, execution time or by the time your project is completed. And then documentation. Well, this part is so so important.、Uh, I have to really emphasize it because you have to think about what partner needs to know to use your deliverables without your team being there. Anymore after the project finish,、um, if your 
if your partner, uh, the end user, is very technical, they can run the code and fix the bug themselves, it's perfect. But if they are marketing team, for example, who don't know how to run the code, the like extra care of documentation can really um, give you a long way. Yeah. And then the third part, um, although not every team does this, but I really recommend it is as a retro perspective. So you can have a retro within your own team. You can also invite the teaching fellows as well as um, the partner. This is the part where you reflect on the project. What went well? What was tricky? Are there any ideas and lessons learned along the way? And then just give out flowers, like recognize people's contribution to the project. This part will really help you to, to um, like prepare for your interview later on if the interviewers ask about the Capstone project. Cool. So that's like, I just throw out a lot of information at you, uh, but I'm gonna throw out more. What else makes a successful project? Okay, so I feel like throughout my presentation, as uh, maybe you noticed that, but communication is key. So tip number one, really understand the personality and working style of your team, what they expect to get out of the Capstone project. This is a very, very important step to form the team before you go into working together. Tip number two, be transparent of your feelings and your work. Um, give frequent and timely feedback. This part is so important because if you hold a grudge on like people who are rude at you, then it's just you giving you a hard time. If everyone confronts each other in a polite way and find ways to improve uh, the working together, then um, it's just like give everyone a peaceful time. Um, to really focus on on the project. Uh, also, this is like like it happens in real life as well. Like be transparent and just like if you don't agree on any ideas, just raise your voice and uh, really work on it as a team. Tip so number three: uh, frequently work together in the same room. Uh, I would say same room right now physically is not possible because of social distancing, but you can set up a hangout uh, room or a Zoom room to work together. Mute a lot apart, but if you have any question, unmute yourself and then raise that up to the whole team and work together. Tip number four, um, like I mentioned before, really highly recommend morning stand-ups to check in the progress and the plan out the day. And to number five, uh, the more you meet with your partner, the, pe the, the better. Um, because it will give you an opportunity to understand the context of the business or um, get your questions answered. Okay, think about your capstone project as a training time, not within your capstone project only, but also for the future. Uh, during my cohort, we got access to DataCam for free. Um, so like a lot of us uh, make use of it and practice our coding style, learn new methodologies. Uh, we also spend time reading papers and discuss the content together. Um, it can be any paper that can benefit the project or it can be reading paper for fun. <laughs> um, and then uh, scheduling sessions with partner to to understand any business context that you might not be clear of, or with your teaching fellows, if you're not clear on um, any notions or any methodologies. And I want to call it out that as long as it is communicated to your partners and your teaching fellow, it is okay to slow down a little bit, even spend more time than other groups to understand the concept, what stakeholders need to achieve, and then scope the project. Because if you don't fully understand the concept and the business context uh, for your data, it is like it can be very confusing later on when you try to fit any money. Cool. And last but not least, I want to say that just embrace the diversity. There are three moving keys in this project: uh, your team, your partner, and then the teaching fellows. 
Uh, if the partner, especially during this hard time, maybe they don't have the job offer for you, um, but if that's the case, it's okay. Ask them to introduce you to their network, uh, mentor you for career advice. And then within your team, if you feel like your teammate is not as strong as you are in a particular area, then offer to explain, offer to pair review uh, or pair coding with them. Or if you yourself feel that you are not bringing enough values to the team, then offer to take notes during meeting, uh, just contribute in any way and be a very helpful teammate. Like offer to test out the code, for example. Uh, and then your teaching fellow. I know that uh, each team is assigned to one teaching fellow, but if you, um, because each teaching fellow has a strength. So if you want to, you can feel free to reach out to all of them and pick their brain. Okay, and um, that's all. And if you have any question, now is the time. Or if you're shy, uh, you can reach me out on LinkedIn. Any questions? You can click thumbs up. Um, um, like go into manage participants and then uh, click on the thumbs up. Uh, hi, I have a question. Is it all right if I can ask right now? Yeah, feel free to ask now. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for the presentation. And my question is actually not directly related to Capstone. Mm -hmm. so, uh, you mentioned a lot about like the project management uh, uh, sort of like workflows and stuff. Like, do you have like any specific tools that we can use, not just in like Capstone, but even for our personal projects to like manage different projects and deadlines? Yeah, so there are different uh, tools. I think Trello is one of the free ones. Uh, something that uh, a lot of tech companies are using right now is Monday.com. Um, I think, yeah, Monday.com and then uh, Chira. Chira is very popular among tech companies. There are just so many tools out there, um, but like there are free and paying tools as well. But think about like what you need and what are the values. Um, that each tool is bring out and then consider paying or not. Thank you. Hey, I have a question. I was wondering if you have any tips on how to run uh, good stand-up meetings to, to make them effective and enjoyable for everybody. Uh, yeah, so very great question. So for stand-up, uh, what my team usually do is that um, we spend around five minutes in the beginning just talk about, hey, how is it going for you and your family during this time? Or just like giving any updates about life or work, anything like that, any fun things. And then we we'll go into, um, like we open the, the project management tracking board to see where we at. And then each person will go through um, a brief like summary of what they did yesterday, what they will do today. Do they need help on anything, call out for help, or if they learned anything new yesterday? Yeah. I believe Kenneth has his hands up. Please go ahead, Kenneth. Uh, hi, hi, Ha. Thanks for the presentation. I was wondering, like, um, what were some of the risks that uh, you did not expect going into the capstone that you discovered while going through your capstone itself? Uh, thank you for your question. So actually it is a uh, <laughs> big risk. I, so when we went into my capstone, I worked for uh, Dest Destination British Columbia. So the main stakeholders are in marketing. Uh, they want to do a marketing attribution, which I don't think was possible at that time. So we proposed a different direction for them. Uh, but then that direction ended up being very um, code heavy. It's an R shiny app, and then the person who supposed to take care of that R shiny app, he changed the company. So that was the risk that 
I came up to know after my project was done. I didn't anticipate that during the project and thus it ended up being useless. If I knew at that time, then maybe like really crunching the numbers to get insights from uh, the data and having a report on those insights might be more useful for marketing team to, to have actions on their strategy. Okay, I believe Leslie is next. Uh, hi, hopefully you can hear me okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, great. Um, yeah, thank you for an amazing presentation. I'm just going to like stow away your notes and basically use it like a textbook in the next month. Um, but I, I had a question about when you were talking about the daily stand up and being able to share what you did, let's say in the last day, what you plan to do. I was, I was wondering if there are any tools or methods for even just keeping track of yourself, like say you have a GitHub board, a project board, and say you have an issue that's assigned to you, but within that issue, there's probably many kind of action items or tasks that might need to be done. And, and I don't know about you, but I know for me, like if I think about in the last 24 hours, I'm like, yeah, I know I worked super hard yesterday, but I don't even know what I did because maybe you did so many tasks or did so many commits. I guess you could look at your commit messages, but I was just wondering if, if you've encountered that in your working life in terms of just, do you even, can you even identify what you did the day before in terms of like being able to say so specifically? And if, if there's any kind of tools or technology to help you manage or keep track of that? Very great question. So I encounter that every single day because uh, um, the project plan now, uh, maybe it's there, but then we re still receive a lot of ad hocs from uh, different teammates along the way with an announce. So what I did, um, you can use this a notebook like this. So I keep notes of all my tasks yesterday and all my thought process. Um, yeah, or I mean, if you want to go not notebook, then you can just type into Google Docs or even like Google Spreadsheet. I feel like it's very cheap and straightforward. I don't know out there if there are any tools like that. I haven't looked yet. Great, uh, Gaurav is next. Yeah. Hi, ha. that was a very informative session. My question is regarding uh, what, uh, can you explain what do we do in hackathon, that capstone hackathon we have? Mm. Uh, so I don't know if it's changed uh, this year. But um, I believe that during my cohort, it was the time when um, it's good to invite the partner as well. But if not, then it's a time where you and your team will look through the data set together and really think of, okay, what are some of the direct directions that we can take um, and think about that to put in your proposal. It can be a time where you talk about how you want to communicate within the team and uh, to set out the proposal. So is it more like uh, planning of the project, not the coding stuff, etc., right? Yeah, so I remember during that moment, we try like just different method from very simplest method, like linear regression to see if it works. And then uh, just like to understand the data set itself first, uh, the context of it and um, like just like plan out some of the rough idea of what actions you can take to achieve the goal. I know that like those actions can change along the way because you never know what will happen in the future. Yeah. Thank you. I think the next question is from Ifar. Um, hello. Hi. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, I was th thinking about like, is it something that people usually do is to like set a, um, set a, like a, a skill set that they're trying to acquire during the project? Like, I want to learn this, I want to improve this, and I want to do this and keep track of them, like, during the project and then kind of like evaluate after the end of the project? Yeah, so when you think about this question is about success, right? Setting up success, I assume. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you think about the success, think about what is your personal success, and then think about what is the team success. Um, so the team success, I assume that it has to really relate to the end deliverables. Um, like what is the usable level, like usability level that you want to reach. Because I know that eight weeks is a short, um, short time. Capstone partner also understand that or just make it clear for them that eight weeks, you cannot achieve very big thing. So maybe an MVP would work. That might be your success. But in terms of your personal uh, success, if you want to try out any new methodologies and learn more about that, um, then you can set aside. You can share that success with your whole team as well. Uh, so like you just keep accountability for the whole team. But other than that, I think those are the two main success you need to think about. Thank you. Are there any last questions? Okay, it looks like there's no more questions. So, um, of course, you can contact uh, Ha directly, as she's mentioned on LinkedIn, if you do have questions uh, about Capstone or about project management. And um, I'd like to thank Ha on behalf of the MDS program for a wonderful presentation. That was like a lot of good information. I'm sure students will make good use of it. Thank you so much, Ha. Thank you. Well, like uh, Angela mentioned, feel free to reach out to me during um, your Capstone project. Uh, I myself will uh, will be a partner as well, so I'm sure that uh, I will get to work with some of you. Hey, good luck on your project. Bye.